So this is part two in a short series on environment variables. If you haven't already checked out part one, be sure to do that. We talk a lot about the benefits of environment variables and how you can leverage them to make your solutions or your apps better. In this video, we're simply gonna show you how to use environment variables. So we're gonna go through uh, what it means to create one, how to create one, and then how you can use it both in a flow as well as in a Canvas app. Today we're gonna to show you how to use environment variables in the Power Platform. First things first, um, whenever you're working with environment variables, you generally wanna be inside of a solution. Um, so you can either create a new solution uh, from the solutions uh, tab, or you can choose an existing solution. In this case, I've got one called working with EVs or environment variables. I'm gonna go ahead and select that solution. Um, and within the solution, uh, you'll be able to create a number of items, including flows, apps, a lot of different things. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and create our first environment variable. So to do that, we're gonna use the new menu at the top and environment variables will show up under this more option. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and select an environment variable here um, and we're gonna give it a name. We'll go ahead and call it my variable. Uh, and we're just going to uh, use like a simple text uh, variable in this case. Note that you have a number of different options here. You can Use decimals, JSON, which can be very handy if you need to uh, provide, you know, an, an object or a more complex um, variable. Um, but we're going to choose text, um, and we have an option to set a default value here and a current value. I'm going to go ahead and create a new current value, um, and so we're going to go ahead and uh, put a value in here. We're gonna, simply going to say, "This is my variable value." and we're gonna save that. And so that will be our first environment variable. Okay, so now that you have an environment variable, the question is, how do I actually use it? So uh, one of the things I mentioned just a moment ago was we need to be inside of a solution, and so we're gonna remain inside of our solution, and we're gonna add some components to the solution to simply show you how we can leverage or use that environment variable. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually create a cloud flow. So that's a pretty common place where people are using environment variables a lot. Um, it's likely where you'll use them the most. Uh, so I've selected my Cloudflow tab, um, and we're gonna go ahead and choose to create a new Cloudflow, and that'll show up under automation when you're creating new items in your solution. Um, and in this case, we're gonna create an instant flow because I plan on calling this flow uh, from another component or even calling it manually. And we're simply gonna call this get my variable value. Um, and for now, we're gonna choose the Power Apps trigger because that's what we're gonna uh, call it from. And so that's gonna go ahead and create our flow. Now, in this particular case, I'm actually gonna swap this Power Apps trigger out for a newer version of it. Um, so there's a Power Apps V2 trigger. We've talked about that in some previous videos. I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out. So I'm gonna delete this trigger and add in the Power Apps V2 trigger simply because it has some nicer configuration options. We may not use them for this video, but we'll have them if we need them. Um, so there's our trigger, and we're gonna add a new step here uh, where we're actually going to simply return the environment variable value um, that we created. So in this case, we're going to do, we're gonna look for respond option. So there should be a Power Apps respond to Power App or Flow. Um, and this will give us the ability to add an output. In this case, we're gonna choose text. And we're going to go ahead and call it my variable. That's what we called our variable. And now we're going to go get the actual environment variable value. Um, so you'll notice I have a whole bunch of environment variables uh, in this environment that I'm in. But in this particular case, the one we're targeting is the my variable option. And so now that's going to basically pull that value out of the environment variable and return it to whatever has called this flow. All right, so we're going to go ahead and save that. All right, so now that we've saved our flow, we're ready to actually go and test it. Uh, we're gonna hit test it and we're gonna choose the manual option. And when we test our flow, there's our option to run it. And it looks like it was successful and this is gonna kick us over into the actual uh, run history or that instance. Uh, and we'll be able to see what our flow actually responded with and there it actually retrieved our value for us. Um, and so that's what it returned. One extra little thing just to verify and see how that actually works in terms of an environment variable and how we can use it. Uh, we're gonna jump back into our solution and we're actually gonna open up our variable. 
and we're actually going to change this. Uh, so it did say this is my variable value, and we're going to go ahead and change that to my name is Mike. And we're going to save that environment variable. So again, we're saving the current value in our environment. All right, so now we should be able to test this again. We'll go ahead and test it manually, run the flow. And once we inspect the actual action, we should see that it returned a different value. So indeed, my name is Mike, uh, is what it pulled out of our environment variable. So let's look at some other ways that this can be used. You can imagine how you might use it in some of the flows uh, that you have and some of the automated processes that you have. Uh, but let's look at some other options to actually use this. So ways to use it in an actual Canvas app or a Power App. All right, so here we are in our Apps tab in our solution. I'm going to go ahead and create a new Canvas app from our menu, I'm gonna call it show my variable. And this will give us a simple place where we can simply display that variable to the user. Uh, there's gonna be a couple different ways that we can do this. Uh, so the first way that I'm gonna show you is a way that works um, or that you can use assuming that you have a Power Apps paid license. Um, so we're actually gonna to connect to Dataverse. So I'm gonna jump over here to my uh, data connections or my data sources. Um, and we're going to look for environment variables. So we're going to go after the environment variable values. Okay, so now we're connected to our Dataverse environment variable values table or entity. Uh, we're going to go ahead and drop a label uh, on this uh, screen uh, and connect it to some data. So I'm going to go over here and we'll simply throw a text label on here. And this is where we're going to put our, our value. And in this particular case, um, we can simply go directly after that Dataverse table. We're going to do a lookup. Um, and in this particular case, we're going to look up that environment variable. And you'll see right away that it's populated. So that's a quick way that you can get an environment variable. So if you need to use those um, you know, in a connection or in a filter or to display something to the user on the screen, uh, you can go after it that way using uh, Dataverse directly. The other method that you might use to go after environment variables, which would not uh, require a, a paid license, would be to simply call the flow that we actually just created um, and bring that in. So let's take a look at what that would actually look like. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go ahead and add another label where we're going to pull that in. Uh, and this time, uh, we're going to set this to a variable. which doesn't exist yet. So that's what we're gonna have a little red X until we create that. But to create that variable, we're gonna do so with just a button. Uh, we'll make it really simple. And this button is gonna call our flow. So on select, we're gonna call our flow, but to be able to call the flow, we're first gonna add a connection to it. So uh, let's go ahead and add a uh, connection to our flow. We don't have to create a new flow, we've already got one. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And there our flow shows up from our environment, get my variable value. So we're gonna select that. And once we have that, we can jump back over to the on select property of the button and we can simply call, we can do set bar ev value. And we're gonna set it to get my variable value, we're simply going to run that. And so now if we run this and click our button, all right, so let's uh, rework that a little bit. So what's actually returned from our flow is a record. It's not just the text value. Um, so that's something you need to be, be aware of. So when I set this, it set the value to a record. Um, we could have done something like this. Um, because it actually returns a variable called my variable. Um, and then it would have left it as a text value. So let's go ahead and make that update. And now if we go set our text label to our variable, we'll click our button and we've retrieved our environment variable. So this would be a scenario where like maybe in the old school days, you might've been running app on start. And so you could, you know, execute that flow and get that value back, or you could do it on on you know visible on a on a screen, or 
on button click or something like that. There are a number of different options you could do uh, to retrieve that environment variable. So those are just a few simple ways that you can use environment variables, both in a flow as well as in a Canvas app. Um, and so you can imagine all of the different things you could do with that. But before we get are done with this video, I want to share a little pro tip with you, something that um, I had to learn early on, and it took me a, a minute to kind of slow down and register what it, what it actually meant for me. Um, so in the case that you've got this environment variable and you want to actually um, roll this out to another environment, uh, one of the things that you're going to do is you're going to um, go into your solution. So let me get back out to my solution in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And we're going to jump back out. All right, so now we're back out in the solution. Um, and in this particular case, like the typical thing you would do if you're going to move from your development environment to let's say test or maybe even production is you're going to export a managed solution. Um, and one of the huge values of using environment variables is that you can then have a different value in that variable depending on the environment that you're in. So um, if let's say that environment variable is pointing at a SharePoint document library, it's got a specific URL in your dev environment, that's going to be a different SharePoint site collection probably than what you're using in test or in production, or at least it should be. Um, and so in that particular scenario, you want to be able to change that environment variable as you move from your developer environment to a test environment or a production environment. Um, and when you do that, you're going to export typically a managed solution, which means once it becomes a managed solution, you really don't have any longer have a great way or an easy way to edit the environment variable in, in that scenario. So when you export that, there's a key thing that you want to do before you export it. And so on any environment variable, when you edit that, you're going to have a default value. Um, you're also going to have a current value. And it's important to note this little uh, info panel down here tells us to remove this value before exporting it um, because it shouldn't or if it shouldn't be used in other environments. So the key thing to note here is that the instruction that it's giving us is to remove it from the solution, not delete it from the environment. So what this actually allows you to do when you remove it from the solution is it keeps the value in the environment. Even though you no longer see it here, it's actually still in the environment. And if I were to go into my flow, for example, and test this again, and we'll just do a quick inspection and see that indeed it, it's still there. It returned a value. Um, so that's a pretty important thing. But what that means now is that we can actually take this solution um, and we're going to jump back out to our solutions. And I'm actually going to export this now. So we're going to publish all of our changes. All right, so our changes have been published. Um, I'm not going to check it for issues because we shouldn't have any issues. There's not a whole lot going on here. We'll go next. Um, we're going to choose manage because this is what you should do if you're moving to test or production. The objective there being, uh, if you're if you're managing your app lifecycle properly, you're not letting people monkey with your code in the test or the production environment, for example. Uh, so we're exporting as managed, and we'll go ahead and do that. And again, wait on Microsoft for that to export. All right, we were able to export successfully. So now I can actually download that solution package. So that that'll download to my local machine. Um, and now we're actually going to flip to another environment. So I have. Um, I'm going to just go to this production environment that I have here. We're going to go ahead and import the solution. And because we emptied out that current value for our environment variable, on the way in, on the import, it's actually going to prompt the user for what we want that to be. Um, so there's our prompt for that. Our variable, again, is called my variable. We're going to say, hey, this is my production environment. And we're going to go ahead and import and wait some more. All right, so now that our solution has been imported successfully into our environment and we've set that variable, uh, we can actually go in here and we're going to play the app real quick just to verify that it actually works as expected. So right away we see this is my production environment, which is what I set that variable to. I'm going to go ahead and click the button and we'll invoke that flow. Um, and retrieve the same value from that environment variable. So, so there you see we've been able to take our solution and move it to another environment, specify a different value for that environment, and then verify that it worked. All right, so that does it for our second video in this quick series on environment variables and how to use them. Um, hopefully by now you understand some of the benefits of environment variables and how you can apply those things in your world. Um, and also 
simply put how to use them and how to actually use them in a Power App or a Canvas App, as well as a Flow. As always, if you have questions or comments, we're always happy to see those post below. If you want to see more of this content, be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.